Okay, folks, today we're going to work on the speed of sound level. Now, remember, if you're going to find the speed of any particular wave, what we can say is that the velocity is wavelength times frequency. So the question then is, how do we get the wavelength? How do we get the frequency? So the first thing we've got to, is we've got to get the frequency. So I have tuning forks. So I have two tuning forks. The first tuning fork I have is C. And it's a frequency of 256 hertz. So we've got 256 hertz right there. And when I strike it, I always strike it on the soft object, you can hear it. Now, it's not that terribly loud. So what I'm going to do, what we're going to do in this particular lab, is that we're going to be able to use resonance. With the resonance, if we can go and get a standing wave inside this tube, so we've got this particular graduated cylinder, which happens to be here, and then inside of it, there is another tube. Horrible picture, but you get the idea. So what's going to happen is, is the sound's going to go down, and then if we take a look right now, if I hit this, it's not that terribly loud, but as I go up, ooh, right about there, we have resonance, which means there's a special relationship that exists between this distance, the distance of the tube, the distance of the pipe, and this particular frequency. And we're gonna measure that. The way we're gonna go about measuring it is, I put this guy into here to measure it, and I strike it. And once again, I'm gonna to get to where I get the resonance. Ooh, that sounds pretty good right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this guy so I get from the water to the, to the particular top of the tube. Boom. Then I'm gonna take a look at that particular length. That particular length happens to be 0.32 meters, 32 centimeters. And so the length of the tube from here to here is 0.32 meters. Now, interesting sort of thing. I can't take the distance directly from the top here. I have to go a little bit more. That little bit more I have to go is in reference to the diameter of the tube itself. It needs room to be able to get that. So the distance that I'm getting here is 0.34, so this diameter here, diameter here is 0 .3, 0 0.034 meters. And as it says on the lab itself, I need to multiply that by a factor of 0.4. Don't get yourself too tied up relative to that. So what we need to do is we need to go and measure this and it's 0.034, so this distance here, 0.034 meters, and I'm gonna multiply it by 0.4. And when I do so, I get 0.034 times 0.4, and we're gonna call this 0.014 meters, which means now that the distance that I have is the 0.32 this very small little section there, which is 0 0.014. If you're following on the sheet here, you'll notice we've already put the frequency into two, we put the length of the uh, air column there, the diameter, and then we're going to do this little addition here. You guys can go do that and you can figure out what that is. Um, and in fact, uh, actually I will do it for us right here. So it's going to be point, uh, this guy's going to be point three, three, four meters. All right, now the question is, this is the length, the length, 0.334 meters. Now, you've got to think about, is this an open or a closed pipe? And if it's, uh, depending on the type of pipe, if it's an open pipe, remember the wavelength is going to be uh, the length times two, and if it's closed pipe, the wavelength is gonna be uh, the length times four. So it's got length times two, length times four. That number then, whichever one you decide that it is, is gonna go up 
into there, and you can figure out the velocity. So we need to know the temperature. And the temperature, by the way, for today is 23.9. And here's our equation. Velocity 331.6 times T. You guys have seen this before. And this is 23.9 degrees Celsius. So now what you can do, calculate what the velocity is here, compare it to the velocity there. And that will get us through the first side. The second side asks us to go and to do this again, except this time it's going to turn out that the frequency for the second time, and I'm just going to put it up here, frequency for the second tuning fork, well, now we've changed it. Instead of a C, it's a G, 384 hertz. Now, before we start doing this, let's think just one second. Our first tuning fork was 256. Our second tuning fork, 384. Now think about it. If I have a higher frequency, think about what's gonna happen to the wavelength. And we can go and co uh, actually compare those. So what we're gonna do real quick here is I'm gonna do the same process again. So I'm gonna hit this guy here. And I'm going to get this guy to be generated. Put this guy in here. Hmm. Okay, and now I'm going to go back through, get this guy again, and putting it right there at the top. And we notice that for this particular one, it's going to be, the length is 0.21 meters. And you're going to go through the same process again to go and figure out the velocity. Get working on it, and then your teacher will go and check with you about how your work's doing. And we'll see how close you actually get to the actual speed of sound which you generate from here. And you're going to find out pretty darn close. Thank you.